Good evening, everybody. Brian Newbert here from uh, GoldenBlack.com, live in Mack Arena, joined by many, many empty beer cans. Uh, this is your GoldenBlack.com rap video following Purdue's harrowing and eventful 105 to 96 overtime win over Northwestern here in Mack Arena. Purdue and Northwestern, as I said about Purdue and Tennessee, are like Batman and the Joker, destined to do this forever. Um, anyway, thank you to the Purdue Club Hotel. For your support as always we appreciate it very much um, 105 to 96 these two teams have played two classics uh, this Big Ten season you know sometimes a team can just I don't want to say have another team's number but can be such a problematic matchup for that team that it's always going to be an adventure even if one team is you know markedly better than the other one I think for Purdue Northwestern is that team Purdue ought to be thrilled to death to be done with these guys for the rest of the regular season because they are a huge pain in Purdue's ass. Pardon my French. Um, for a lot of reasons. And I think the story of this game is not Purdue almost losing to Northwestern, but rather the fact that Purdue won despite having to weather an absolutely magical shooting game from Northwestern. No one ever could have foreseen, in my opinion, Northwestern shooting... 14 to 27 uh, from three-point range on the road at Purdue. Uh, you're just not supposed to shoot as well on the road as you do at home. And we all know Northwestern is one of those many teams in the Big Ten that is just a different animal at home than they are on the road. Uh, but Boo Booey, Ty Berry, you just have to you know, give them a ton of credit for just being unbelievable in this game, magical in this game. I mean, Boo Booey makes seven threes, Ty Berry is six and nine. Especially Bowie. These aren't easy shots, guys. These are, it's not like Purdue's forgetting to guard him. He's just making plays. As I said during the game, this is how people felt in the 2019 NCAA tournament when they were playing against Carson Edwards. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do. Um, could Purdue have been a little bit better defensively? Sure. It's not like they didn't try anything. Purdue played freaking zone tonight. It was a disaster based on what I saw, but they tried it at least because of what Boo Booey can do in space and what that is, the matchup problems he creates for everybody, but especially Purdue when he has room to operate and you know things like that. So um, just an unbelievable game by Northwestern. You have to give them a lot of credit. Them almost winning the game is as much a story as Purdue ultimately winning this game is. Um, just an unbelievable performance by Northwestern. You have to give them credit first and foremost. Second, Purdue missing a ton of free throws. Had Purdue lost this game, that is the Purdue-focused story of this game. Just one of those things. It's just why things snowball the way they do in basketball. I will never understand why a team collectively gets hot or collectively gets ice cold, whether it's shooting threes or shooting free throws all at once. Doesn't make any sense to me. It never has and it never will. Now, the thing about this was, you know, Trey Kaufman Wren missed a bunch of free throws, a couple one and ones that really make the numbers not even tell the whole story of how much Purdue struggled at the line. He hasn't been the best foul shooter in his career. He puts a ton of time into it. He's been better lately than he was to start the season, and he deserves credit for that. But his struggles at the line were not, you know, unique. Uh, you know, Zach Eady lately has been splitting a lot of pairs. Um, he has been, I think he missed two uh, at some point in the second half of this game. If not, I don't think it was overtime. Uh, I can't read my notes, so uh, just kind of bear with me here. At some point in time, Zach Eady missed back-to-back -back free throws. Braden Smith, who even though he's only in the 70s this year, has proven himself to be a borderline elite foul shooter. He is the guy you want at the line. Other than maybe like Mason Gillis or Fletcher Lawyer, Braden Smith is absolutely your guy you want at the line. And um, just one of those nights for Purdue at the foul line. There's no real explaining it. Um, you know, Northwestern talks a lot about the foul differential, but they don't talk about how lucky they were that Purdue missed. Um, what is it? So Purdue's 29 of 46. So you guys can do the math. Uh, you all went to Purdue. You know how to do math. Um, it's a lot of free throws, and it's the reason 
that Purdue doesn't win this game going away despite Boo Booey and Ty Berry turning into, uh, you know, Michael Jordan and Larry Bird in the old McDonald's commercial where they're playing for each other's lunch. If you're young, you don't get it. You can YouTube it. Um, I'm sure it's on there somewhere. Uh, but they're just making shots from everywhere. Uh, you know, one more unpredictable than the next. You know, things like that. Um, but Purdue did itself no favors to the foul line again. Yes, they practice free throws. Before you email me, please understand, they practice free throws every day for a long time. Yes, they diagnose mechanics. This has been a good, pretty good foul shooting team all season long. It was one of those nights. It's the sort of thing that just happens. So before you email me about Purdue not thinking free throws are important, just putting that out there. So, um, But that was a big part of this game. If Purdue just makes five more free throws or six, seven more free throws, not only do they win this game in regulation, but they win it by a couple possessions. And it never comes down to, you know, Boo Booey having a shot to win the game at the buzzer. I thought real time Booey was going out of his way to try to just draw one of those fouls on Lance Jones where he gets Lance Jones to crawl up his back. I just watched the replay. I think I might have missed seen things. I don't know. But um, Northwestern played great, and I think that's that's something that's really important to point out here. And giving the opponent credit I know is not what the Internet Court of Public Opinion typically is prone to do, but I, I think it's, it, it's apropos, appropriate, in this case, because Northwestern was really freaking good, at least on offense. They were great on offense, not so great on defense. Uh, but Purdue's really good on offense, so um, that's obviously part of it too. But, uh, you know, what this sort of comes down to too is, um, you know, Braden Smith is just, you can't really uh, – add any more Tom Deanhart likes to use plaudits. I've never used the word plaudits in my life, but that seems appropriate. Plaudits. It means praise. A noun to mean praise. Like if I'm giving you praise, I'm handing you something. That That's a plaudit. Um, we all know he's really good. He's one of the best guards in the country. Uh, I'll write about the whole Bob Cousy Award thing tomorrow. It's already written. It just has to post. Uh, I'm not going to get into the whole standing up for Braden Smith thing. I think it's played out and kind of unnecessary. It's an egregious oversight. Make no mistake. Don't misunderstand me here. But I think that um, the story's been told here. Uh, it's th- that's the sort of thing that has made him good, is my point. And it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world for things like this to happen, even though it's not something Braden Smith deserves because he's proven himself to be a great player. Tonight, he was marvelous magnificent, surgical, um, preeminent, uh, virtuoso, whatever adjective comes to mind, um, because he, anything Northwestern did to guard him in ball screens, he just picked it apart, and 16 assists is an unfathomable number, that's like a month of assists for a lot of guards who've come before him at Purdue, Uh, 16 in one game. I know it went to overtime, but 16, you know, 10 is a huge deal. 10 used to be one of those things that just never happened until Braden Smith came along. Um, I'm not sure that prior to Braden Smith, I even saw a 10 assist game in 20 years cover Purdue, whatever it's been. Uh, Lewis Jackson might have done it once, maybe twice, if I recall correctly. Um, But it was every couple years maybe or in Lewis Jackson's case a player like that came along every couple years Uh, part of that's been offensive system part of that's just been the fact that they've not had that player and now they have that player 16 assists doesn't even tell the story of how he just carved them up like a Thanksgiving turkey to use the worst analogy I possibly can think of but they brought their big man up they stuck to him direct product of all those pull-up jumpers he's taken and made all season long. Those skip passes across the floor, those are not easy passes to make. He makes them and he throws the ball right where shooters need them. He made simple plays. He made, you know, the secondary assist type plays where he gets trapped. He's got to throw it back to the guy at the top of the key who then 
gets the easy assist either throwing it into Edie right in the middle of the paint or the guy on the opposite wing for an open three. Just damn near a perfect game for Braden Smith. Uh, he did miss his two three-pointers. He did miss a couple free throws, so maybe perfect is a bit uh, of an overstatement. But as a facilitator, as a floor general, as an offensive leader, as all of those things you would call a point guard, you would use as a synonym for point guard. Um, he was absolutely marvelous in this game. Marvelous. Um, and he's, you know, obviously Zach Eady, uh, a huge part of this. But Braden Smith's command of this offense is probably the biggest individual piece to why Purdue ultimately won this game. That said, it was not the only piece. The clutch shooting in this game, you know, is just like a survival instinct that I think Purdue showed here. Lance Jones making those threes. Uh, Fletcher Lawyer making that big three in overtime. Um, and then Zach Eady getting loose, not for threes, but for dunks and stuff against Northwestern, Northwestern uh, Junior Varsity team there in overtime. Which brings us to the last topic of the day. Look, media don't need to become a proxy war or join a proxy war for coaches whining about officials, fans arguing with each other on Twitter about how the refs handled the game. But what people do not understand or they are purposefully ignorant about in their comments about games, this goes back to my friends in the SEC back in November uh, from a variety of different schools. This is what Purdue is built to do. This is, their, this is what they do. They draw fouls. They out-physically you to death. They win battles of attrition. They shoot a million free throws. It is what Zach Eady does. It is what Mason Gillis and Trey Kaufman Wren do on the offensive glass. It is what Purdue does to a lesser extent, penetrating off their ball screen offense, things like that. This is Purdue's model. So... Chris Collins saying, I've never seen a team shoot 50 free throws. It was 46, by the way. 50 minus 4 is 46, so 46 does not equal 50, and I was told there would be no math. Um, you could just as well say, I've never seen a team come into Mackey Arena and make 14 threes. Well, that's what Northwestern does. So what's the difference here? Yes, Boo Booey didn't shoot a free throw, um, which is uncommon. Um you know, and I'll go back and watch the game tomorrow and see where he should have. But at home, what Boo Boo Booey gets away with is all his all the little tricks you learn when you're a 25 year old player playing against. Now, obviously, Lance Jones is an adult too, but you're a grown up playing college basketball. You stop short, you back into people the way they got Lance Jones fouled out in Evanston. You know, things like that, and it, it didn't work tonight. Um, other than that. You're shooting jumpers, you're shooting threes. You don't get to the foul line that way. The same way, I can't remember who it was in Honolulu, one of the uh, fan bases were yelling at me about foul differential. And like, well, your team shot 53s and Purdue posted up every possession. What do you expect? But, you know, it, it is kind of unfortunate that this game ended with a Chris Collins tantrum when he knows as well as anyone that no one in the country can guard Zach Eady without fouling him, and he's upset that the game was was called in a manner that favored Purdue, which anyone who's coached in the Big Ten for more than a week understands that's how it goes. Purdue last year in Evanston was robbed, robbed, absolutely jobbed by the officials to the point the Big Ten, and of course the Big Ten does not publicize this because, God forbid, anyone publicly hold officials accountable it was like two dozen blown calls, and they were egregious. There's screen caps of Northwestern locking arms around Zach Eady at the foul line. The sort of stuff that's not going to get Zach Eady hurt, but is going to get Northwestern players hurt. The sort of thing Chris Collins should not allow his team to do. So him talking about the foul differential um, after games, the free throw differential, is really intellectually dishonest because they're – whole MO against Purdue is we're going to beat the you-know-what out of Zach Eady the whole game and make them call it. We're going to grab his arm, we're going to pull him to the ground, and we're going to just hope like hell nobody gets hurt. And we're going to hope like hell that they miss some free throws, which Purdue did in this game. And ultimately, there's the battle of attrition that when you do that and you get to overtime, you have no players left. So Purdue's model worked in this game. Northwestern's 
model for a game like this did not work. This, I, this team at Evanston last year was dirty. I didn't think they were as dirty this year in Evanston. Tonight, there was a fine line being walked here uh, in, in terms of what was being done to Zach Eady and specifically his right arm. Um, you can go back and watch. I'm sure the Big Ten will go back and watch tomorrow. And uh, yes, Boo Booey didn't shoot a free throw. Um, that's that is a valid complaint, I guess. But what Northwestern can do is they can go find all the fouls that weren't called, and they can send them to the Big Ten, and the Big Ten won't do anything about it publicly. But at least Northwestern will have will have um, said its piece um, because the coach wasn't going to talk about the refs after the game. Um, the same coach who walked up the tunnel taunting Purdue fans, uh, waving his arms up and down, kind of kind of mocking the the our house thing. That's not a great example to set for players. These are kids. Boo Booey is not a kid because he's older than me. Um, a few of these guys are. I mentioned in the preview. Boo Booey is older than the Bulls' two starting guards, the Chicago Bulls' two starting guards. That's what college basketball has become. I'm not demonizing Northwestern for taking advantage of it. I'm just saying the competitive advantage that comes from this. And yes, Purdue is benefiting from it with Lance Jones, but they are not building teams around this. Um, But by and large, these are kids. And when the coach acts like a child coming off the floor, that is not the best example to be setting for kids. Um, I know he's not the only coach to rant and rave and act like a fool, um, but just kind of a disappointing ending to this game to see a really, really great college basketball game and a really, really admirable performance by Northwestern, who is a surefire NCAA tournament team, if you ask me, kind of end that way um, with the coach getting ejected and taunting fans on the way out. Yes, okay, he, he did. He stopped and shook Matt Painter's hand, but that was that was a... That was a show-up move. Um, anyway, uh, I, I, I need to stop talking about officials. I need to stop tweeting about officials because it's just playing into the whole conspiracy stuff going on in, in every fan base in America after basketball games and things like that. I need to kind of keep separate from that. Um, but it did bear it did bear mentioning because you know we, we cover these press conferences and. The quote-unquote narrative gets set by whatever the coaches say, and sometimes the coaches are full of it. And should be, that should be, uh, I'm not sticking up for Purdue. I'm just saying, one team is built to shoot free throws, a ton of free throws. Um, The other one shot a ton of threes. And one was in the game because it made a ton of threes, and one damn near lost the game because it missed a bunch of free throws. And that's a big difference. Um, So making this game about free throw differential is really intellectually dishonest. So that's what I got. Thank you to the Purdue Club Hotel for supporting this ranting and raving. Uh, As always, and thank you for watching. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening. And thank you for processing our materials. No matter how many times those materials have fouled you. Good night, everybody.